I love the classic Mini. They were so culturally significant for Great Britain. I mean, everyone drove one. You had even the Beatles driving them and Mr. Bean. So I don't know how I feel about them being converted to electric. I mean, this was the perfect car for the swinging 60s and optimistic Britain. And Mr. Gonis's fantastic design was both functional, practical, and genius. It was revvy, fun, and light. So making an electric version of such a British icon is surely like throwing an avocado on a roast dinner. But Felton, the company that's just outside of Bristol and responsible for building this electric mini, reckons I shouldn't be so worried. So Chris, CEO of Felton, Am I being stupid in thinking you've ruined this car? Highly likely. Why though? What, what's I mean, it looks like a Mr. Bean Mini, so what's so amazing and so original about it? Full bolts in electric kit. And when I say bolts in, I mean nothing is cut, modified, or anything like that. I mean, obviously it still rusts like an original Mini does. Yeah, and that's all down here, is it? I split, so we couldn't have the weight distribution mm -hmm. stains. So we've got some batteries in the front motor, and we've got some batteries in the rear, so yeah. within five kilos of original weight. Five above or five below? Five below. So this is a lighter Mini. It's a lighter Mini, so it's still handle the same, it's still a little go-kart. I think that's the key thing with the Mini, it's got to drive and feel and handle like the Mini. And obviously we see them racing around, even Mr. Bean had a few moments where his Mini was a bit sideways, so the weight distribution is the same, so it's still very live on the rear, still fun. Yeah, it's still nippy, it's still to catch you out here like to try and spin the wheels a lot now because the power is I think we're record 100 brake horsepower or something like that which is that's like th more than three times the original 59 yeah some of them were even like 30 something it's quick power with electric conversions is rarely an issue but space is especially with a classic mini with no room under the floor to fit a battery like a conventional ev and only a small amount of space for batteries at the back the team had to get creative not only did they manage to squeeze extra batteries under the bonnet with the rest of the electric setup they made it all fit without cutting any new holes so we've taken an original subframe, uh, which is a brand new original subframe and built onto that. And so it's a drop in and drop out like they originally done. We haven't done any modifications to any of the body or the monocoque at all, but we've got this, this new subframe instead, which holds everything securely. Handily for those installing this felt and produced electric crate, the setup is about as close to plug and play as can be. The electric motor is packaged so it powers the front wheels via a single speed gearbox through drive shafts in the original mini position, maintaining the car's wheelbase and its iconic squat stunts. And the power electronics and in-house made wiring looms are packaged neatly into the casing behind what is quite possibly the world's smallest cooling radiator. So this is like a radiator, yeah. this is like the normal radiator fluids. Down there, it runs on normal glycol like you put in a normal car. Oh, brilliant. To keep the, the motor system and stuff at the right temperature. That is a tiny oh, radiator. Yes, at this big. That big? It's got wow. a little motorbike fan on it. Doesn't need a huge amount of cooling. Yeah. We never go over 80 degrees. Yeah. So it runs so much colder than a normal ice engine would have done. Yeah. Um, and then we've got basically five battery modules in here. Yeah. We draw on plates uh, and all of our contacts, all of our clever electronics to make sure it's safe. Yeah. You've got your safety disconnect in there. So if there were an issue, you can pull that out to shut the vehicle down. Like you've got all the modern EVs. Right? Yeah. And yeah. Like crash sensor just there. Oh, yeah. So if it ever crashed, it would shut the whole system down, make it safe for the fire service. Fantastic. So yeah. that point of making not just an EV, but making it as safe as possible. Minis were never particularly no. much safe anyway. Yeah. And, but we've gone as far as we possibly can to make it as safe as it possibly can be. And just like Isagonis' original, Felton's Mini conversion continues to make astounding use of packaging behind the bulkhead. Running no lower to the ground than the old exhaust pipe under the car is a tray holding low voltage electronics and fluid pipes leading to the back. They link to more battery cells, squeezed perfectly into the old spare wheel well with their wires running through the original fuel line holes so no new ones are drilled. And get this, Felton has actually increased the boot size of the Mini because the original 33 litre fuel tank has gone from inside the boot, so it's more practical. You still can't fit a set of golf clubs in there. <laughs> close. Well, I mean, you know, Mr Bean only liked Mini Golf, didn't he? BMW Mini were engaged in conversation with you during this yeah. and they asked for the... There was five built in total for the BMW marketing team. Yeah. Um, there was one done for Paul Smith, one done for Laquena. Brilliant. And they've been out all over the world uh, helping with the launch of the new electric Mini. And there is, we've got better brakes than this just because they visually look nice. But you've got regenerative braking like you have on an EV. So yeah. with Mini, the regenerative braking being on the front helps you with your braking. Yeah, yeah. So it dynamically, based on brake crack position, will yeah. more regen or less. So it brakes better than it ever used to. Yeah. And you put some power back into that. So it's quicker, it weighs a little bit less, and it's got better brakes. Yes. So you have you have upgraded the Mini in the, tra in the changeover to electric as well. And you've lost that's good. I love the petrol yeah. oil and they do that as an eau de toilette now though. You can just get that. An oil patch on the floor. No, yeah. As your driveway every time you get in it. Yeah. You've lost that noise, you've got your choke. But to be honest, I've had lots of minis and they're not the sort of thing I missed. Yeah. 
was trying to make sure it started going out in the rain and this lots of yeah. wet and it not starting there's all those bits that are now gone yeah I mean interior wise we've got a full set of gauges that look original yeah we've actually we've got a digital dashboard in this as well for prototyping we do have analog canvas gauges so they look yeah. like the original gauges same with the gear selection is a physical drive neutral reverse in the same place the original mini one was and you still get the comical sort of steering wheel up like that and you know still got all the tactile yeah still feels like a mini when you're sat in it you wouldn't know it's electric when you sit unless you look closely at the gauge and see you've got state of charge and stuff yeah. like that you would have no idea yeah the outside looking in of course there's no star without substance and thankfully this light little mini only needs 19 kilowatt hours of combined batteries to achieve a respectable 110 mile wltp range that you might remember is just 34 miles less than the first gen mini electric and well, that actually had BMW Mini a little worried. So much so that the brand asked Felton to limit its car to 93 miles per hour. So it didn't have a top speed higher than the new Mini. Imagine that. And while the charging speed is just seven kilowatts, because the battery's so small, a 20 to 80% top up needn't take more than two hours. Best of all, charging lets you appreciate another stunning bit of Felton engineering, the perfectly integrated charging port, complete with the original fuel cap. We should probably get driving it then, shouldn't we? But first, actually, we're going to have a quick look around and just see some of the other cool stuff that Felton does. Yes, you won't be surprised to hear, given how tiny it is, that the Mini is just the tip of the Felton iceberg. While it does restore and upgrade cars like these 911s and this unfinished Land Rover Defender, this is no typical resto mod company. No, the team at Felton goes a step further and can call itself a proper engineering firm, taking electric motors and building bespoke battery packs and powder-coated subframes around them. The team can rebuild and upgrade tester differentials to suit new products, and Felton even produces the wiring looms in-house, meaning it sells these electric conversions for vehicles so they can be shipped on a crate. The company's so versatile, it even produces these setups for boats, which is handy, really, when you see the weather we're faced with for our drive. All right, so Felton looks great and the Mini sounds great, but how does it drive? Well, let's find out, shall we? I've booked us in a perfect British autumn day. It's chucking it down with rain and it feels very Mini-like in the sense that I'm tiny. I'm in this miniature little vehicle. I feel like Rowan Atkinson, Mr. Bean, just bumbling along. But the characteristics of the Mini feel very familiar. It feels light on its toes, just like a normal Mini. It's quite fidgety because obviously it's tiny. But the big difference, obviously, is firstly, I don't have any gears to play with. And secondly, there's no noise. But there is something you don't get. I'm just going to put it into sporty mode. There is really quick acceleration. And I'm not kidding, this is quick. This is like Ford Fiesta ST quick when you put your foot down. We've got tiny little 10 inch alloy wheels in this car with fresh rubber, but still they're miniature, not much wider than my fist as contact patches around the car. So there is a little bit of, well, a little bit of wheel spin when I put my foot down. But interestingly, because this is electric and it runs on software, obviously, there is traction control. So when I put my foot down and I feel the wheel spin, I can feel the car just working to stop the slip too much, although I know it's there and it feels quick. In fact, this car will crack the 0 to 62 mile an hour sprint in about seven seconds, which is the same, give or take, as Paddy Hopkirk's Monte Carlo rally winning Cooper S. And also, oh, cattle grids are very, very firm. You learn that in a mini. You learn about road surfaces in a mini and you know every single rut and chamber in the road. But obviously minis and the Monte Carlo rally winning mini, that was a Cooper S, but it was all about the nimble handling. That's why it beat bigger sports cars up the course. And well, on this twisty B road, on this little bumpy route, I can feel the agility of the Mini remains. There's a little bit of body roll, but <laughs> she definitely still goes around corners. I also love that you just bumble to a stop. I just feel like Rowan Atkinson. I feel like I'm gonna come across a three-wheeler and I'm gonna knock it onto its side. <laughs> oh, it's so quick. Now, obviously, it's got standard brakes on this car, as we mentioned earlier with Chris, the body shell and the brakes and basically everything, including the 12 volt, in fact, the battery, the original 12 volt battery setup is still in the boot. And so all the ancillaries, my heater and my vents and everything are all still controlled by those normal things. And so are the brakes. The brakes are still controlled by the standard system, which means if I brake too hard, I'm going to skid. I'm going to lock up the front wheels. Cattle grid. You don't need a masseuse when you go over that. So yeah, I've got really authentic and raw control. This is a proper mini experience, but one that is really quick. <laughs> 
and that authentic vibe is retained elsewhere in the Felton Mini experience because the team has kept so much of the standard setup. I love that the drive selector looks and feels like the original gear lever, and I love that the old engine's choke knob is now the drive mode switch, which you pull out to put the car into sport mode. So, it definitely handles like a Mini, it definitely drives like a Mini, but actually, should we check if it sounds like a Mini? <laughs> Yeah, that sounds like a Mini, all right. Plus, you even get the original key to start in. So as far as authentic electrified Mini experiences go, well, this has to be the most ultimate one. I actually really, really want one, I'm sure you can tell. Although there is another quite old Mini that I really enjoyed driving earlier this year, and it's the R50 in this one. And I think it might be ripe for electrification from the team at Felton pretty soon. What do you think? Give it a watch. Oh yeah, and one more thing. Um, this car supports vehicle to load, so I'm gonna use the Mini's power to top up my Tesla. Very lucky. 